guys, welcome back to my channel. This is acrylic artist Joni Young, and today I'm going to be showing you how to paint this waterfall scene in the middle of the jungle, kind of like looking up through the trees. And we're going to be using a lot of fun colors today. I'm going to go over them right now. First, I should say we're working on a double primed 11 by 14 stretched canvas. We've got sap green, burnt sienna, red, magenta, neon red, lemon yellow, white, turquoise, light ultramarine blue, phthalo blue. Now we might not use all of these colors, we might use them all and even add a few. If you want a full list of colors and brushes we're using, scroll down to the bottom of this video in the description box, everything will be there for you. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to begin using my uh, number 11 flat brush. I'm going to get it a little bit wet and I'm going to take a little bit of yellow, white and neon red. I'm just going to start anyway, crisscrossing, sweeping, scooping, however you want to apply that paint. Just feel free and go with the flow. I'll take more white now. Maybe a little bit. Let's play up on this neon red a little bit. Now I'm going to take a bunch of white and a little bit of light ultramarine blue. Take more of that white, a little bit more blue in here, a little bit of that neon pink and white, make some purple colors. Now I'm going to blend this out with a large blending brush. I'm just going to, from the center, start fanning it out in sort of like a sunburst. Now this gives us the illusion, that feeling that we're already looking up. I'm going to take a little bit more white. This might have a bit of pink in it, that's okay. a little bit more white right there. Why not? I'm going to go back to my flat brush. I'm going to take green, burnt sienna, a little bit of that magenta that's starting to dry from two days ago. I keep my studio nice and cool so the paint stays wet for a long time. And we're going to create a scoop goes down and then up. This is going to give us a really dramatic perspective. And then we're going to go with our brush like this. And then we're going to pull some little loops and lines like this. Let's take a bit more of those colors. Our waterfall is going to be right in here. I'm just doing this all really roughly right now. Underpainting, building up the land, the sky, this whole composition. I want to forget about those little edges right in there. I want to take some of my phthalo blue now, burnt sienna. And that makes an interesting color. I'm just going to pull my brush and drag it both ways to create all those lines, formations in the rock. on the red a little bit too. Let's take some of that and bring some warmth in here. You know red is really complementary to green and we're going to definitely have a lot of green in this. 
Let's take a little bit of yellow and white and red. Maybe we'll have some little pools in here in these rocks. that color there and then we'll go over we'll glaze over put like a filter over when it's dry of the turquoise and maybe a bit of phthalo blue so I want to take a little bit of phthalo blue right now take it with that light ultramarine blue and I just want to start laying in some blues here as an underpainting for the waterfalls. And the little pools of water. I haven't washed my brush out at all. I like the natural different tones I'm getting as I mix over all the other colors. To give it a white, light blue, phthalo blue. We'll just leave that there for now. Now as this has time to dry we can start working on our trees. So first we want to build up some foliage and to do that I'm going to use my mop brush, one of my mop brushes, and we'll take some sap green and some yellow. Let's just take a little bit of burnt sienna in with it just to get more of a darker earthier green right now. And I'm going to turn it this way. So we already get that feeling that it's growing up and coming this way. Go right up the side like that. Let's take some yellow and we'll start adding in some highlights here. Maybe we've got some moss covered rocks and that looks a bit smoother, right? So then that's when you're gonna kind of pull and sweep stroke with your brush. Then you'll stipple Get more of the bushy texture, leaves and everything. We'll leave some spaces. We'll come in here. some more yellow. You do this wet on wet and that's when you get all the mixtures of colors happening. It saves you a lot of work and it's a lot more fun. Who wants to sit and wait for everything to dry and to plan something out too much? Okay, so I'm going to switch over to another brush now. I'm going to use my Filbert brush. This one is a number 10, I believe. I'm going to get a little bit of white, yellow. I'm going to bring some light in right here. We've got a little bit of moss-covered rocks down here, a few 
few of those. Lighten that up a little bit more. Just keep layering white with yellow. Don't push very hard. If you push too hard, you're going to take that paint right off. Sorry if you hear any hammering in the background. We're currently building a fence around our front yard right now. I should be out there helping actually, but I kind of escaped. I think my husband knows where I escaped too. I was helping. I just needed a break. Sometimes it can be stressful building things. It's not really my cup of tea. I'd much rather be having a paintbrush in hand and creating something. All right. I think I want to add a little little pocket of light right in here. Let me just pick up a little bit of a little bit of white right there. Just lay that in there. And just lightly pull through a little bit of that yellowy green before we come in with our turquoise. Let's begin our tree trunks. I'm going to be using my number one liner brush or round brush. Either one will work. And I'm going to take sap green and burnt sienna again. And we're going to have one right. Here, maybe it's just coming right out the side, and we've got another one right in here. If your paint's not flowing, get a little bit of water on there. And this is going to feel really awkward for you guys putting these trees in on this angle if you've never done this before, but just trust me, trust yourselves, don't think about it. Just go for it. It's just a canvas. It's not life or death here. You can always paint over it if you don't like it. But this is how you're going to grow as artists when you're trying something new. Different perspectives, you know? It's really interesting and it's really great for your mind. For learning. I think this is looking really cool already. Can add a few little wiggly branches in here. If you're shaky, like I just had a cup of coffee and caffeine makes me a bit shaky. It's going to make some really neat branches. Just use the very end of your brush for the small branches. For perspective, we need to make the tree trunk wider on closer to us here. Just like that. I'm going to take a little bit of my white ultramarine blue and just make some light little tree trunks that are small down here, they're further away. And I'm going to go back to let me see, I think I've got a really small mop brush around here, somewhere. Of course I can't find it, so, oh, there it is. Here it is, this little guy. This is a half inch, and we'll just add a few little delicate phthalo blue 
yellow. Just give a little bit of earthiness to that, just tone it a bit with a little bit of that burnt sienna. And I'm adding a bit. I pick it up, I turn my brush, and I tap to make it look a little bit more realistic. I'm going to take a little bit of white because we're going to be farther away up in the bright, bright sky towards the sun. So they're going to look a little faded. Take a bit of my light ultramarine blue again. Just lighten up this area right here. You know, I think I want to have a little bit of magenta in with that too. Let's take magenta, white, and that blue in my brush. can barely see it. I'm going to come down here. Take green, burnt sienna, phthalo blue. Make a really dark, rich color again. I'm going to go right over. Add some more of that in there. Wherever we want it to be really dark, have a nice contrast, and that makes everything else back there have more light. Looks like they're in more of a nice glowing sunlight. still like to do is build up a little bit of yellow, build up some warmth and light in there and soften that. So I'm going to take a bit of white, a bit of lemon yellow, and I'm going to just start tapping. And look what that does. The sun just makes everything feel better, lighter. I'm almost always thankful for the sun. Instantly puts me in a good mood. I mean, the rain is comforting, and I know we need it. I know my garden needs it, that's for sure. But when the sun comes out, I am outside. It's hard for me to resist. Well, I think this is looking really, really pretty. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below if you're getting inspired, if you're liking this so far. Let's 
got some moss covered rocks right here. You know I love my moss covered rocks. I love moss, anything with ferns. Forest full of moss is one of my favorites. And we sure have a lot of them here on the island. Very lucky. All over my yard actually. And beautiful ivy that grows around the trees. I know that's not supposed to be a good thing, but I think it looks so um, whimsical and fairy tale like. I'll just add a little bit of greenery in here. We've got some some ferns right in there. Who knows? Well, I think we're ready to start adding our turquoise. Wash my brush right off. And I'm going to take some turquoise right there. I'm going to get my water or a little bit of water on my brush. Loosen that paint up so it flows easily and I don't have to push too hard. And let's pull over a little bit like that. A little bit of white if you want. Well, that's pretty, isn't it? I'm going to take some turquoise and phthalo blue now. I'm going to begin this waterfall. And it's slightly the ankle we're on. It's on an angle like that. another one right in there. Very exaggerated angle. You know I did another, this reminds me of that other one that I did that went up like that and it was just all a bunch of waterfalls. I'd forgotten about that. I'm taking a bit of my magenta now and I feel like I really need to add a little bit of purple magenta tones in here. I can't really explain why these colors just kind of come to me. I just kind of see and just kind of know. I, I'm not really sure. I've always just kind of known what colors that I want to add and been very brave about it. Um, and I like to show you guys, you know, let me be the guinea pig <laughs> and then you guys can decide if you if you want to Add those colors too. I'm now going to take my large flat brush. It's all nice and clean. I'm going to take my white. A little bit of light ultramarine blue. Get it on the tip of my brush like this. And I'm going to pull down. Pull over. Drop. more white on there now and do the next layer. And then you want to do light little circles down here at the base. Get all that foam and the spray from the water. You can have more coming down if you want. You can build up those layers.
take, I cleaned my brush, I'm going to take some burnt sienna, a little bit of neon red. Those colors make a nice warm tone. I'm going to tap it out on the bottom of my brush. I'm going to turn my hand over like this and I'm going to very lightly add some rocks in here. Well, they're there already, but we can't really see them, so slightly dragging. Grab a little bit of white. And you can go across. That and that gives us more of that rock, that rock look. We can add, oh, maybe a little bit of moss over some of them. A little bit like that. Add some more of my turquoise. A little bit of phthalo blue with it. Let's bring in some pretty blue right in here. Phthalo and turquoise make a really pretty color. Very tropical looking. A little bit more turquoise on the brush. We've just got like different, a few different little pools in here. Maybe there's another little one right in there. Would that be pretty? A bit of turquoise with my light ultramarine blue. Also makes a really pretty color. All right, so I'm gonna take my small mini fan brush here and I'm gonna brighten this up with some white, just the very top like that, and then add a little bit of a spray right there. Pull into my blue. This is kind of like a part two of my Blue Falls painting that I did a little while ago. Boy, that one was fun. That was a little, little painting that I did. That was a lot of fun to paint. I sure enjoy painting waterfalls. And I hope you guys are learning a lot. just blending softly there because I want it to um, look like it's kind of blurry. Taking a little bit of my phthalo and light blue. So see how I turn my brush in different ways so I get kind of a different look. Now I just want to add a couple little ferns right in here. So what I like to use is a small filbert brush. Here's another one. It's a number four. 
and I'm going to take a little bit of turquoise and sap green, maybe even a little bit of yellow. Just hope you guys could see that. So that was turquoise, sap green, and yellow. And then I'm going to tap. Now that doesn't show up very well, so I'm going to add a little bit of white and yellow. Put some tropical looking plants in here. Some right up here too. Right at the base of this little cliff. So just a little something like that. Just gonna add the last highlight here. Last little bit of softening and highlights. Soften the tops of these trees and make them look. So I'm just taking a bit of white, guys, making these look farther away. It's a great way to put something farther away is to lighten it up. I'm just going to go ahead and use the same brush. So I kind of just want it to be the brightest right here where the main source of like light is coming from. And then just a little bit. A little bit in there. I want to thank you so much for joining me. And thank you to all my patrons. You guys know who you are. You helped tremendously. I recently bought a whole bunch of canvas and brand new paints. And even a couple of new brushes. So thank you again. Thank you to all my subscribers and supporters on YouTube. Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest. Have a wonderful day, you guys, and I hope you learned a lot. I hope you leave a comment and subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet already. And I'll see you next time very soon in a new video. Bye for now.